Welcome to LeMaster Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build this music box project with an Arduino microcontroller. So I call this project the music box, mostly because it makes music. You know, seems pretty straightforward. I gave mine a volume control potentiometer and three modes that you can cycle through using a push button. First mode is manual, where you can use this additional potentiometer to change the actual note that plays through your buzzer. The second mode is a quick cycle through a simple scale. And then the third mode plays a pre-recorded song, which really showcases how cool you can make this build with some meticulous programming. There are brilliant people in the Arduino community who have already made tons of your favorite songs and they leave GitHub repositories of all these songs as we'll talk about a little bit later that you can download for completely free. Now I did solder my final project mainly because I haven't done that in years and I wanted to get a little better at it, but you absolutely do not have to. This whole project can be built on a breadboard and this tutorial stands completely on its own, but if you do wanna get caught up, follow along with all the Arduino tutorials on the channel. I will leave a link to that playlist in the description of this video as well as a card to it somewhere in the top of the screen right about now. The kit I've used to build everything in my Arduino series so far is just the official Arduino starter kit. I got it from Amazon. I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video as well. And for this project in particular, in addition to an Arduino board and a breadboard to build everything on, all you'll need is a few jumper wires, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a push button, two potentiometers, and your piezoelectric buzzer. Again, you don't need a soldering kit but potentiometers do have kind of a bad success rate in breadboards. So if your project seems a little buggy, but you're confident you have it wired up right, you might wanna consider it. But huge disclaimer right here, never solder anything unless you are comfortable with the concepts. And if you're on the younger side, make sure you have adult supervision. The soldering iron gets very hot and it can be very dangerous. So don't put yourself at risk. You can build this on a breadboard. Now let's dive right into the circuit build. As always, make sure to do the wiring without the Arduino powered on. This circuit and most circuits basically boil down to power, ground, and your signals back to the Arduino. Start by providing power to one leg of your manual note control potentiometer and one leg of your push button. Next, connect ground to one leg of each potentiometer and one leg of the piezo, and then also connect ground to the other leg of the push button, but make sure to put your 10 kilo ohm resistor between that leg and ground. This will provide a load for when we push the push button down so that we don't generate a short. And now we just have to look at incorporating our Arduino signals. Start by jumpering an analog input wire from the third leg of our manual note control potentiometer back to an analog pin. I'll use A0. Next, jumper a digital input wire from the ground side of your push button but before the 10 kilo ohm resistor back to a digital pin on your Arduino board. I'll use two for my build. Now for the last Arduino signal loop, jumper a wire from a digital pin on your Arduino to the unused leg of your volume control potentiometer. And for me, I'll use pin eight for this. Then the last connection in this circuit is to make the third leg of that potentiometer tied to the unused leg of the piezoelectric speaker. This completes the circuit. And to summarize what's going on here, we have a push button that will give us a digital zero or one reading, a manual note control potentiometer, which will give us a reading between zero and five volts as we adjust it. And then a digital output that actually tells our note what to play and passes through an additional potentiometer where we can limit how much total voltage gets to the piezo. Now you may not have heard of a piezo speaker before, so to get a real understanding of what's going on with this little buzzer, let's take a look at a quick science lesson thing. So piezo buzzers are like tiny speakers, but don't require an amplifier or any other circuitry to drive them, which also means they don't get as loud. When we apply voltage to the piezo, there is a ceramic or crystal component that actually changes in size. And by rapidly changing the voltage, we are actually changing its shape fast enough to make it vibrate. And this creates a pressure wave that our ears can interpret as sound. The property of changing in size due to alternating voltage applied to it is known as piezoelectricity, and it does actually work in reverse as well. Meaning if we apply mechanical stress to these components, they actually generate electricity. This is the basic principle of how original clap-on clap-off lights work. Now, specifically for our application, 
as a speaker, the frequency at which we apply electricity to the element determines the frequency or note that it's going to play. However, the volume of the note or amplitude is actually determined by how much voltage we apply to it. And this is the whole purpose of the volume control potentiometer because we actually need to mechanically adjust how much electricity gets to it. Some of you attentive viewers and fans of the channel in the Arduino series may be saying, why are we able to control the frequency and therefore note of the piezo using any digital output pin on the Arduino rather than needing a PWM or pulse width modulation pin like we had to use in past videos to control analog elements like our servo motor. And that's because Arduino boards use a method called interrupt rather than PWM to control piezos. I'm not gonna get too far down the rabbit hole of PWM versus interrupt today because that would take too long and this is just a quick science lesson thing. Now let's check out the programming or sketch for this project. We wanna start by creating an array of integers that we'll use as the notes for our project. Now while the piezo can be commanded to a wide range of frequencies, basically any value between zero and 5,000, we're gonna use the middle A, B, C, D, E, F, and G with respective values of 220, 247, 262, 294, 330, 349 and 392. I'm not gonna get too into why those numbers represent those notes today. That's a little more music theory and a little less science lesson-y. Next, define an integer value to store the state of our switch, an integer value to track what state is currently active, another integer to store our manual note controls potentiometer's key value, as well as an integer to check what the last state recorded of our push button was. That's really important to make sure that we only change modes once every time we push the push button. Now the code for the setup loop, which runs once per project initialization is very simple. Start by commanding serial.begin and then pass in a 9600 as an argument. This is known as the baud rate or bits per second of data transfer that our computer communicates back and forth with the Arduino board. Then on the next line, define pin mode two or whatever you have your push button hooked up to as an input. Now, interestingly, we don't need to define pin eight or whatever pin you're using to control your piezo as an output here, because as we'll see, we actually use the tone command, which doesn't need to be initialized. And that's it for the setup code. Now let's take a look at the loop code. This is code that runs over and over forever as long as our project is booted up. We'll start by setting our key val variable equal to the reading from pin A0 every loop. This is gonna give us whatever value our manual note control potentiometer is currently adjusted to. Next, let's set our switch state equal to a digital read command from pin two. Now, if you're ever curious to monitor what value your potentiometer is reading in real time, or you need to do any troubleshooting as to why maybe your board isn't working appropriately, the serial.print or serial.println, if you want a new line every value, is a really good command to insert here and read the actual state of your switch and the value of your potentiometer so you can boot it up and see the values changing on your console in your program. Now let's handle what to do when the button is pressed. And we just wanna check if the button is actively pressed and if the previous state of the button was not already pressed. If we do have these conditions, we want to increment our mode, which means if we're less than the maximum total modes in our build, which for me will be a total of two to start, then we just wanna add one to the mode. But if we're already at our maximum mode, then we wanna reset it back to zero to basically create a continuous cycle of modes. Then regardless of the state of our push button, set previous switch state equal to switch state. And this is how we handle when we push the button only incrementing mode once because we'll only see that the previous switch state was zero and the new switch state is one once. Then however long we hold the button down, previous switch state will still see that the last scan was a one as well. And so it'll know not to increment it again. Then when we release it, it'll go back to zero and it'll wait there until the next time we push the button. Now let's take a look at what to do in mode one, which is gonna be our manual note control. Now with a simple for loop, we're gonna check the value of key val and play one one of the notes in our array accordingly. Since the raw reading we'll get is between zero and one zero two three, and we have seven notes total that we can play in this range, each note comes out to getting about a value of 147, where they should be the note that we play on that potentiometer. Now this for loop needs to read that for an index value of less than seven, where every loop iteration increments up one value, if the key value reading is between 147 times our index, up to 147 times our index plus one, then send a tone 
to pin eight at a frequency of our index values place in our notes list. This is a really cool little code optimization to avoid seven if else statements. And this is all we have to do to get the program to play a note based on our manual potentiometer when we enter mode one. Now for mode two, we're gonna create a simple little for loop, but it's actually even more basic because we no longer care about the key val, right? It's gonna be an automated sequence of notes. So first let's make another for loop that says for index less than seven, which is every note we have in our current notes list, scale all the way up the notes list with a little delay of 100 milliseconds so that we have some time to actually hear each note. Then make a second for loop of index less than five that's gonna go back down our notes list. Now, if you're asking why five and not seven for the second loop, it's just because I want my scale to only play the first and last notes once. And if we had a seven here, it would play those notes twice as it shifted between for loops in mode two. And the last thing we need to do for this initial build here is add an else statement. So if it's not in mode one or mode two, and we just tell the piezo in this mode, don't play anything by writing no tone to pin eight. This is an important addition because otherwise the piezo is gonna keep playing whatever note we told it to play last. Now let's verify this and load this project into our board and play around with it a bit before taking a look at how to add in pre-programmed songs. So immediately on upload, it shouldn't be making any noise because we have it set to load into mode zero by default. Now if I push the push button, I should enter mode one and you should start to hear a buzzing. Make sure your volume control knob is working just by adjusting that one up and down and the note shouldn't change but the volume at which it plays should. Now make sure your manual control potentiometer is working by turning it up and down the scale and you should notice about every one seventh of your range, the note changes. This is a super fun way to manually interact with the music we're generating with our build. Now if I push the push button again, I switch into mode two which is our scales. And you should start hearing it go all the way up and down our list of notes that we programmed it with. And now if I push the push button again and we set everything up appropriately, it should go back to mode zero where we get some peace and quiet again. Now, obviously in the intro, and I've talked about it a few times, we've heard some full programmed songs with these piezos and I haven't explained how that works yet. The reason I didn't show how to do that while we were doing our look at the programming sketch is because it's the same concept as we have in mode one where we play the scales and we tell it to play a specific note for a specific amount of time. But to do an entire song sequence is a massive amount of work and it would take a ton of time to program in each note and duration of a note in these popular songs. Fortunately, the Arduino community is filled with incredibly talented and generous people who leave everything open source online. I used some of their songs to showcase the capabilities of this project, but there are massively talented programmers who have put all the time into building these really cool songs for you. So huge shout out to Robson Kauto, who I used for the Game of Thrones and Super Mario Brothers songs that you probably heard in this project. There's an incredible public GitHub repository of songs you can download, and there'll be a link to that in the description of this video as well. There you can find all the code, which includes setting up a library of basically every note the piezo is capable of playing and then the full melody that you need to play to play these songs. And all you have to do is figure out how to use our framework that we just built for modes one and two to add a mode three and copy that code from their GitHubs into your program so you can get this full song. But if you do have any questions about how to incorporate it into your build, just let me know in the comments below and I can offer some guidance if you're struggling to get that added in. If you have any questions about anything you saw here today or anything you'd like to see in the future on the channel, be sure to let me know about in the comments below. I hope everyone enjoys these projects. I appreciate every one of you that watches to the end of my videos. If you wanna help me do bigger and more complex projects in the future, consider becoming a channel supporter at the Patreon link in the description of the video as well. Also hit the like button, subscribe button, ring the notification button, hit any other buttons you can find. And until next time, good luck with your projects and thanks for watching. Bye.